morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Welcome to Short Term Trading Live with Oscar. This is our 577th video, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Traders, this video is being filmed on Sunday night for trading Monday, April 26, 2010. Remember that these videos, unless I tell you it's a weekend webinar and it's geared for long term, these videos are geared for the next day's trading. So if it's done on Sunday, it's geared for trading Sunday night through Monday. And then, and then of course, the next video comes out for the next trade. The only time we leave a video out for more than a day or two is if the markets are still pointed in the very same direction. And then, of course, there's no need for me to come out here and yell at you, right? Traders, futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. Trading futures is not suitable for every trading account, so please, if you do not know this game, or if you do not have risk money, do not play this game. All right, that being said, for you nuts out there that do like this game, because I know it's a sick one, we got Green Omni on the board for Monday, baby. The indices are looking fantastic, and I have some charts to show you. What's on the board? is basically what was on the board in our last video because these things are still in effect and I would like to show them to you. One, bull and bear flags work very, very well and I'll show you that and I'll show you the end result of a couple of flags that we've been showing you in the last three videos. Number two, there was a swing day in bonds left on Thursday for Friday's trading and that worked very well for the push down and I'll show you that. Head test in the soybeans. The soybeans has a huge head and shoulders formation and the market's running up for the test of the top, middle to the top of the head. And I think it's gonna get there. The beans are looking strong for the head test. And once it's there, then we'll know what the next big move's gonna be. So very interesting on the soybeans. Traders, in the euro currency, in our last video, we told you euro currency bearish and it was very bearish for the last couple of days. As of today, however, we think the euro currency may need another rally day. Maybe one of those two-day rally series before it heads back down. So we're not as keen on the downside for tonight into tomorrow in the euro currency. We'll see how that pans out. With no further ado, traders, I got some charts I'd like to show you. Remember, it's Sunday night. We got a big week, long week ahead of us. So with no further ado, let's look at some charts. Okay, traders, the first chart you are looking at is the Dow Jones Transportation Average Daily Bar Chart. We deem it the leader of U.S. indices. Why do we have a green omni on the board for Sunday, Monday's trading? Because look at that. Look at this beautiful channel it's in. Traders, we were in this channel for a long, long time. This channel goes all the way back to March of 09. Finally got above it, broke out, and has created a new channel, that red one I have defined for you. And even if it wanted to run into resistance, it would have to get up here in order to run into resistance. So we have a market that looks quite bullish. Indicators are bullish. The leader is bullish. That channel is bullish. The street seems bullish. The reports coming out from the government are bullish. You can't sell a bullish market for no reason at all just because your opinion might be bearish. you got to follow the technicals, and technicals tell us. Look for more rally here in the U.S. indices, and that's what we're looking for. But I have a few other leaders to show you before we get to the S&P, so let's look at those. Okay, traders, the next leader of the NASDAQ, the June Daily Bar you're looking at, take a look at this parallel channel. It has worked and bounced off top and bottom of this channel very, very well, a very strongly defined channel. We just bounced off it only one and a half trading sessions ago, and we are here now, pointed north. Once again, another one of the leaders in a very well-defined parallel channel pointing towards the upside. We are bullish that market as well. Okay, traders, one of the markets, one of our leaders, that if you ask me, in my opinion, has led this entire move for weeks and weeks on end, that's the Russell 2000. You're looking at the Russell 2000 June Daily Bar Chart right now. Look at how well-defined this channel is. And look at the big moves off the channel when you get them. Nice, big, solid move, and then away you go. We're sitting up here right now, traders. Very, very strong-looking market. You have all these days of rally. Now we're here, pointed straight up, and I think it's going to keep on going. My point is, if you notice, when you do bounce off this line, you get a major rally to take place. You know, you got close to the line, had a major rally take place. Got close to the line, had a major rally. Bounced off the line, had a major rally. Good, solid line here 
Good solid channel, strong market. Another one of the leaders of U.S. indices looking strong in my opinion. Let's look at another chart here. Okay, traders, the E-mini June S&P daily bar. This one follows the leaders. This is a follower, right? It just bounced off its parallel channel on Friday. You can see that the leaders are two days away from their channel already. The leaders hit, rallied, rallied. The follower hit it on Friday and had one day up. That means it needs a couple of more just to catch the leaders. We trade the follower in a June E-mini S&P. That's our market. That market looks strong. It's got bullish indicators. It's in a bullish parallel channel. And its leaders are bullish and leading it higher. So you got to think buy the dips is the proper mentality in the S&P for Sunday night into Monday. Okay, traders, a few more charts here. We're going to move around a little bit to a few different markets. So take a look. Okay, traders, one of the markets that I find very interesting here is the 30-year T-bonds. They have run into major resistance. It started way back here, back in December, bounced here a few times. Then we got through it here just a couple of days ago and had a major drop. And this is also your swing day setup. Remember that swing day? We had one day, the middle day, and on this day we wanted to expect a break. Well, we sure did. We broke all the way to here on Friday. The swing day worked really well. Very, very nice trade. Let's put those swing days in your arsenal, traders. It's a great tool or weapon to have in this fight against these commodity markets. So make sure that you recognize the swing day when it's here and trade it properly. So now we're looking at the 30-year bonds. The larger picture is, take a look, we're coming to an apex. The market is bearish overall because the Fed is going to have to raise interest rates at some point. And if the Fed raises rates, the bonds go down as bond yields go up. And the bonds had just run into resistance right here. Now, if you have a chart running into resistance and the indicators are overbought and turning towards the downside, you probably have a short trade coming your way. We always trade with stops traders, so whether it works or not, our stop will be in. But here's the setup. You have major resistance, you went through it, failed, came down on a swing day. Now let's go look at the indicators and see if they would agree that we're going to go down to the bottom of this channel or apex that's building. Okay, traders, sticking with the 30-year T-bond daily bar, I showed you that we were running into major resistance, and then, of course, we want to look at indicators and see if they agree. Look at the CCI, Commodity Channel Index. Look at how it's run into trouble up here. It had gotten as high as it almost ever gets before it runs into trouble, has whipped around a little bit, and now its averages have crossed one another, and this looks like it's poised for some downward action. So indicators agree with that apex I just showed you, the bonds bounced out of the apex and came back down with bearish indicators. So down is where we will likely go in bonds. But let's look at one more indicator. Traders, along with the CCI or Commodity Channel Index wrapped around the U.S. bonds, we are now looking at the slow stochastics. And once again, you can see it's gotten into its overbought area, the extreme overbought area, and it started to head down. Percent K and percent D crossed right here, and that's a bearish signal. Bearish indicators, the market running into resistance, the indices looking strong, the world knowing at some point the Fed's going to have to change their rhetoric and start to talk about the possibility of raising rates. That will push bonds lower. I like what I see technically. I guess the news will be coming our way soon. Let's look at a few more markets here, traders. Okay, traders, one of the topics on the board was the head test in soybeans, right? What I mean by that is shoulder, head, shoulder. Head and shoulders formation clearly defined. Anybody can spot that. What happens with the head and shoulder formation? This is what will happen. One of two things. Either at the end of the right shoulder, you break down and you have your big move. Or more likely than that, this is what happens with the head and shoulders. You run up out of the right shoulder and get to the middle of the head, the middle to the top of the head. We call it a head test of the head and shoulders. The market will usually get somewhere up here, fail and break. And that is how we love to trade our head and shoulders formations. I have shown this in many, many videos. We have all, us Omniacs I should say, have all seen this work out. Now we don't know for sure until the soybeans actually get up here. 
Of course, if they continue higher and blow out, then it's just a blowout, right? Head and shoulders becomes null and void. But the likelihood is it fails in this area, wiggles around for a day or two, and has a big comeback. That's what we're expecting in soybeans so far. We'll see what happens when we get up to the head, but for now, it's bullish. Okay, traders, a couple more charts to show you. Okay, traders, the first topic on the board today was bull and bear flags work very well. I showed this chart to you just a couple of days ago and said, look, we're about to break out of another bear flag, like the one here, bear flag breakdown, another bear flag formed, breakdown, look at what happened to the yen on Friday coming out of that bear flag, it settled here, what a major break. Bear flags work very, very well. How about a round of applause for bear flags, baby? Go, go, go. When you see them, trade them. Okay, traders, one more chart I'd like to show you in the currency. Okay, traders, sticking with the theme, bull and bear flags work very well. More bear flags, the three little flags. Does everybody remember this chart you remember? Oh, yeah. You remember it, right? It's been in the last three or four videos. Well, look at what has happened. First of all, bear flag breakdown. Bear flag breakdown. Bear flag forms. Breakdown begins. Big, big, big down days all the way down to here. But on Friday, it rallied all the way back up and settled on the high. What usually happens when you see a market do that is you get a day or two up, and then the turnaround comes once again. And here's what can happen. Extend the bear flag out a little bit and you could rally up for two days kiss the bottom of that bear flag and have a drop right back down this is very likely the action that we're going to see but we are day traders and we take these trades one day at a time we trade these markets one day at a time for now we don't want to be sellers of the euro currency we'd actually buy a dip for a day or two and then look for a nice sell point to get back in traders pull your own charts do your own homework Please check your work against mine. Make sure that you agree with the direction we're pointing out to you before accepting or even considering any of our trade recommendations. So, traders, you see those charts? I mean, do those flags work well or what? Oh my God, I gotta clap again from those flags are just fantastic. You saw that swing day, although it never went high enough for us to get in, it went within three points of a perfect sell. So the swing day work that pushed the bonds down, the head test coming in the soybeans, you can see that happening. You got the Japanese yen breaking down out of bare flags. Lots of good stuff going on out there, traders. Traders, one thing I want to remind you is this. Listen, the Omni and the analysis that we showed you on March 17th this year, we started to give pro uh, a projection. Not quite a prediction, because we don't predict anything. We gave you a projection based on technical analysis, traders. That projection, if you recall, not only is it sitting on my board right now, 1290 to 1300 was our projection. 1290 to 1300. You know where we were trading when I gave you that projection, traders? 1135. We are at, at this point in time, we are trading at 12. 15 or somewhere near there. We started at 11.35. We told you watch for 12.90. We're at 12.15, traders. We're going to 12.90, and I don't think that will be the top. This year, that number, 12.90, is coming your way. Watch these videos. Watch them every day. We will show you as we get closer to 12.90 how, or I can show you that now, how we've come up with those projections, and we will keep you in tune and keep you buying dips all the way up there. Traders, if you like the analysis I'm showing you in this video, make sure you come on down to our site. It's www.livewithoscar.com. Come on down to the site. Jump into our free chat rooms, traders. We are in there. There are hundreds of Omniacs that huddle together in our chat rooms. I come in there. I give lessons throughout the week. I give advice. I help traders. I am here to help you become better at technical analysis. And traders, if you're better at technical analysis than you were before you met me, your trading should improve as well if you apply it properly. So make sure you come on down and allow me to teach you how to be a better analyst. Traders, a stop is your best friend. Remember this at all times. I don't care what the analysis says. 
No one ever knows for sure if it's going to work out. You must trade with stops. A stop protects you if you are in a bad position. It is supposed to knock you out of the market so that you stop losing if you are in a bad position. Stops could also be ways of getting out of good positions, but most people use them as emergency stops or protective stops. Traders, we all have insurance, right? You wouldn't drive a brand new car without insurance. You wouldn't own a house that you haven't paid for without insurance. You're not supposed to own a commodities position without insurance. Your insurance is your stop. Put your stops in, put them in first. All right, traders, long week ahead, baby. So you know what you got to do, right, for this long week? You got to keep those dukes up, baby. Strike, punch, punch, jab. You got to just go at them. Keep those dukes up. Keep your stops in. Get ready for a nice busy week because I'm psyched for this week. All right, traders, remember this at all times. Keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do to help yourselves to keep your emotions out of trading is to say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening, and you know what that is. Stop so Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. 